Hey, my name's Daniel and I'm a part of the team here at Black and White Coffee Roasters. Today we're gonna to be making a French press. Maybe you remember it from the late 90s or early 2000s. This video does not come with a thrifted, overstuffed couch, but it should produce a nice cup of coffee. This is just one of a million ways to get it right, but here's what you'll need. A brewer, some way to separate the coffee grounds from the water so they end up at the bottom of beer and not in your cup. Secondly, 750 grams of tasty water heated to boiling. Finally, you'll need ground coffee. For this, we're using 52 grams of coffee ground, a little bit finer than we would for drip. With an old school French press recipe, you would normally grind very coarsely, but we want to increase the surface area of these coffee beans, meaning more coffee touches more water for more time, increasing how much good stuff is gonna be extracted out into our water. Lastly, you'll need a timer like the one that you use on your phone. Here's how it works. First, we're gonna add 52 grams of coffee to our French press. Normally for a, a brew weight of 750 grams of water, we would only use 45 grams of coffee. But since all of the coffee contacts all of the water for all of the time, we need to account for the fact that some of that water is gonna be absorbed into the coffee beans. If you look at a percolation method like a drip machine, or a pour over, you'll see that the water starts out really darkly colored in the coffee liquor that, that's brewed and ends up being light, khaki water. With a French press, we don't have that move through motion, so we need to account for that by adding a bit more coffee. So, timer's set for four minutes, 750 grams of delicious uh, spring water, filtered water, heated up to boiling, and a timer ready to go for four minutes. All we do is pour gently, all the way up to the top. And you'll notice with this method, a lot of what we do is the exact same thing as growing out your hair. You just wait and do nothing. But we do want to make sure that all of the coffee grounds are saturated with water. There aren't any little dry pockets at the bottom. So once I pour all 750 grams, we're gonna give this thing a quick swirl, start our timer, and then wait. Water's in, quick swirl to mix, set everything down, four minute timer, go. And now you have four minutes to do whatever you'd like. Uh, if you're healthier than I am, you can do jumping jacks or you can listen to your favorite pop song. Smash cut. Four minutes have elapsed. Our coffee is done brewing. Now, all we're gonna do is pretend that we are Carlos Santana featuring Rob Thomas of Matchbox 20 and press down smooth. Okay, if you like that classic old school French press, you're welcome to pour this into a mug and enjoy. I like my cups a little bit less silty a little bit cleaner. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set a secondary timer. Instead of four minutes like we did for our brew, this is going to be eight whole minutes. And all we're gonna do is nothing. So you have eight minutes. You can do more jumping jacks. You can listen to two songs. Whatever you choose, uh, we'll see you in that amount of time. Smash cut. Welcome back. Our eight minute secondary timer has come to an end. Now we need to get this delicious coffee into a cup for us to enjoy. Much like decanting a vintage wine, there are sediments and silt at the bottom of this brewer that we want to leave in place. So, just like our press down as smooth as Carlos Santana featuring Rob Thomas from Maxbox 20, when we pour this brew into a decanted vessel, we want to make sure that it is a Kenny G solo. The carafe is never going to tip past uh, horizontal. It's going to remain tilted a little bit on an angle so that we let gravity work with us. And we're going to leave a bit of coffee liquor in place.
So, this brew method uses a bit more ground coffee than a percolated method. If you're making a drip or a pour over, you can use a little less coffee. With this, we had to up the ratio of how much coffee is in water to account for all the coffee touching all the water all the time. This is definitely a brew method that uh, is for a Saturday or hanging out with friends, something that you don't mind spending a little extra time and a little extra coffee just to have an experience that you and your guests are going to enjoy. So let's see, uh, let's see how we did. Cheers. <laughs> French press coffee is at its essence textural. It feels great to drink. Because it's an immersion method, it's full. It has lots of delicious coffee oils. The sweetness in this cup is unbelievable. And this is just one of a million ways to get it right. If you have a favorite French press memory or method or tip, be sure to throw it in the comments below. Don't forget to click like and subscribe. Cheers.